Hi, Ms. Walter. We're gonna present our um, slides and we did evaluating um, the title, Cuttlefish Use Stereopsis to Strike at Prey. For claim one, you need a basic understanding of two terms. That's gonna be cuttlefish and stereoptosis. So cuttlefish are marine cephalopods and they're closely related to octopus and squids. They're comprised of eight tentacles and two arms, and they also have an internal shell on their back called a cuttle bone. They can be found in shallow seas or in the deepest, darkest, darkest depths of the ocean. Stereopsis is how the brain perceives depths by receiving signals from both of the eyes. Cuttlefish use stereopsis when trying to perceive time and distance their prey is from them. So cuttlefish use stereopsis when hunting prey. So during this research, um, they have found that due to the given target, the cuttlefish will position themselves accordingly to strike the prey successfully. And in this experiment, they presented the cuttlefish with a virtual reality kind of movie thing where they would show shrimp in right and left images, and which was used with blue and red imaging. And all of this was presented with a stimulus of the prey like the walking shrimp it was either walking or swimming and when the cuttlefish was presented with a stimulus it adjusted its body to be successful with its hunt so the evidence to support this first claim is the research found that when cuttlefish were given a stimuli at a faraway length there was a significant difference in the extension length of the tentacle than a um than a stimuli that was close in proximity to the cuttlefish so they used different um, depths in centimeters so when the stimuli was zero centimeters from the cuttlefish they found that it would like it reacted differently to the varying lengths of the stimuli so they found that binocular vision was also implemented to receive the best and most accurate response and there is significant data that implied the cuttlefish used stereopsis vision to be able to perceive the depths of the shrimp and then work around what they saw. So the scientific method that is used to describe the evidence, um, during the experiment to test this theory, they were presented with the stimuli at varying depths. Um, they came in randomness, like they wouldn't do closest to farthest. Um, they would do one at two centimeters, one at one centimeter, and then like one and a half, and so on. Um, they studied the length at which the tentacles were extended in comparison to the stimuli, and they found that the cuttlefish would often extend their tentacles farther than the stimuli was um, to be able to successfully grab what they were going for. And all of this indicates the use of stereopsis and ver in like perceiving different depths. So the implication of the first claim is stereopsis is used to detect the de depth of a stimuli. The cuttlefish carefully assesses its prey in order to complete a successful hunt, which directly implies that they can perceive depths and will use stereopsis vision to catch their prey. So for the second claim, there's two terms that we wanna make sure everyone understands. So binocular cues are when a stimulus is presented that can be visually seen by both of the eyes. When binocular cues are intact, it allows for the brain to better use stereopsis. And quasi-monocular views are when the stimulus is presented that can only be encoded by one eye. So quasi-monocular cues make it harder for the cuttlefish to really know where their prey is. Claim two is intact binocular cues speed up prey capture. During research, it was found that monocular stimulated animals took longer to strike, traveled farther, and struck at prey closer than animals stimulated binocularly. So the evidence to support this would be that the researchers found that when the cuttlefish were presented with two different images of prey, one image moving left to right, one moving right to left, that the cuttlefish with binocular vision had a faster average detection to strike time and the cuttlefish with simonocular vision. The data significantly proved that cuttlefish that use binocular cues catch prey faster and quicker after detection than cuttlefish using monocular cues. A scientific method to describe claim to's evidence is during the experiment, the scientists presented half the cuttlefish with two images, which is monocular, and the other half with one image, binocular. The scientists then tested three different variables at different times during the experiment, lapse time, 
travel distance, and eyes to screen for the variables tested. Then finally, the overall time to strike numbers were tested for monocular and binocular cuttlefish. Both binocular and monocular were tested with images of shrimp moving two different ways. The implication of claim two is that cuttlefish who are given intact binocular cues will more quickly capture prey and have a better chance of survival. In the marine, cuttlefish who have the ability to use binocular cues will increase survival and reproduction rates of cuttlefish in these areas. Thank you.